What's up everybody, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on with the weighted average cost of capital. In this video, we're gonna answer this question. Now, if you don't feel like writing all this out, I put a link to lecture notes in the description box. It's just a PDF and you could print that out for your reference. So let's read what's going on here. We have a company that has a past debt with a 7% coupon rate and the debt is worth $500 million today. In addition, today it borrowed $200 million worth of debt at par with an 8% coupon rate. Equity is 10 million shares, each price at $60 with a beta of 1.2. The shares will pay a $4 dividend in one year and will grow at a constant rate. If the risk-free rate is 4%, market risk premium is 6%, and the tax rate is 40%, what is the company's weighted average cost of capital? Okay, so lots going on in this question. Whenever I get a question like this, what I like to do is I like to split up all of the information in list form, depending on the debt and equity. And sometimes there's information about preferred shares as well, but there's no preferred equity in this question. So what's going on with the debt? Well, there is a past debt that was issued it's worth $500 million today, and it had a 7% coupon rate. And then today, what happened was the company borrowed $200 million worth of more debt, and that was at par, and that has an 8% coupon rate. Now, what does at par mean? It means that the bonds are worth the face value, $1,000. And if you remember from the bonds chapter in the previous course, we said that if bonds are issued at par, it means, let's make a note here on the side, that the coupon rate is equal to the yield to maturity. So because the coupon rate is 8% of this new debt that the company borrowed and this debt was issued at par, then we know that coupon rate of 8% is also equal to the yield to maturity. So we can write here that the yield to maturity is 8%. And why is that important? Well, because yield to maturity is the same as the cost of debt. So that is going to be used in the calculation for the weighted average cost of capital. So that's the first trick in this question, realizing that the 7% coupon rate on this past debt is irrelevant. What matters is what's the cost of debt for the company today. And the cost of debt, the yield to maturity is 8% because they issued new debt at par for an 8% coupon rate. And that's it for the debt. What about the equity? Well, the equity has 10 million shares and each share is priced at $60. So that means that if we multiply these two numbers, it would give us $600 million worth of equity. That's the market value of the equity and we need that figure when we're calculating the weighted average cost of capital. Now we're also told that the company has a beta, or the shares rather, of the company have a beta of 1.2. And we're also told that the dividend in one year for these shares is going to be $4. And then they're gonna grow at some kind of constant rate. And then uh, other information, we're told that the risk-free rate is 4%, market risk premium is 6%, tax rate is 40%. What is the company weighted average cost of capital? Now, in the previous videos of this section, we went over a couple of steps to find this weighted average cost of capital. So we're gonna go through the steps in this video as well. So the first step was finding the cost of debt, which is the RD, and we mentioned that that is the yield to maturity and the yield to maturity is this 8%. So that is step one. Step two is the cost of equity. And how can we find the cost of equity? Well, if you remember in the lecture videos, we mentioned cost of equity can be found either with the capital asset pricing model or with the dividend discount model. And notice in this question, they give us information for both. So they give us information 
for the beta of the shares and then notice the risk-free rate, market risk premium, that all has to do with the capital asset pricing model. And they also give us information about the dividends of the company. However, notice the information about the dividends is not fully complete because we're told that the dividends are going to grow at a constant rate, but we're not told the growth rate. And with the dividend discount model, we know that the price of the share, the $60, is equal to the present value of all of the future dividends. So the $60 has to be worth the $4 dividend in one year, and that's going to be a growing perpetuity. So we're going to have R minus G at the bottom, and then this R here is the cost of equity. However, notice that we don't have the growth rate. So we can't find out what this cost of equity is with the dividend discount model. So that information is irrelevant. We don't have to use the information about the dividend and it growing at a constant rate because we don't have that growth rate, we can't find out what that cost of equity is. So to find, this co uh, to find the cost of equity, we're gonna have to use the CAPM model, which is the risk-free rate plus beta times the return on the market minus the risk-free rate, and then this bracket here is the market risk premium. So the risk-free rate, we're given it's 4%, and the beta of each share is 1.2, and then the market risk premium is 6%. So when we do this calculation, 1.2 times 6 gives us 7.2 plus 4. That gives us 11.2%. So step 2 is complete. Our return on equity, our cost of equity is 11.2%. Now an additional note I want to make about this uh, cost of equity and then this dividend discount model. What if the question asks you what's the growth rate of the dividends? Well, now that we have that cost of equity of 11.2, we could actually plug it in here and solve for that growth rate, if that's what the question was asking us to do. We don't have to do that in this question. That growth rate is not going to be used for the calculation of the weighted average cost of capital. But if we wanted to find out that growth rate, we would just plug in this 11.2 as a decimal, subtract G, and then we would just solve for that growth rate. So we can cross multiply. So 60 times 0.112 minus G equals four. And then uh, divide both sides by 60, et cetera, et cetera. And then we can solve for that value of G. But again, that's not what the question is asking us to do. So we can just ignore that dividend discount model, but thought I would make a mention of that. What's the next step going to be? Well, usually the next step is we find the return on the preferred shares, but there's no preferred equity in this question to deal with, so we don't have to worry about that. Next up, market value of the debt. What's the market value of the debt? Well, the company currently has $500 million worth of debt, and it borrowed $200 million more today. So the total market value of the debt is $700 million. And then step four, market value of the equity is going to be what? It's this here, the number of shares times the price per share, that is 600 million. So if you wanted to, you could actually make a mini balance sheet. So we got the assets, we got the debt, and then we got the equity. So the debt would be 700 million and then the equity would be 600 million. Um, and then if you add those up, these figures are all in millions, so the assets would be worth $1.3 billion. So that would be the balance sheet, the general balance sheet of this company. And now that we got all that information over here, we can find what the weighted average cost of capital is with the general formula that we talked about before. So we got the debt over the assets or the value of the company. So 700 over 1,300. We don't have to put the millions. We can just keep it in hundreds here. We can actually just put seven over 13 as well. That would give us the same ratio. But anyway, return on debt, 8%. And then one minus the tax rate. Tax rate is given as uh, 40%. So we have one minus 0.4.
and then the equity is 600 over the assets of 1,300, and then the return on equity is 11.2%. So multiplying this expression, multiplying this expression, then adding them, you would end up getting 7.75%. So that is the weighted average cost of capital of this company, right? So fairly tricky question, couple of tricks in it. The first biggest trick is realizing that because the debt that was issued today was issued at par, that coupon rate is the same as the yield to maturity, which is the same as the cost of debt. So the 8% is the cost of debt, 7% coupon rate on the previous debt is irrelevant. Next trick is that for the equity, when we were calculating the return on equity, they gave us information with both or for both the capital asset pricing model and the dividend discount model. However, with the dividend discount model, because we weren't given the growth rate, we weren't given enough information to calculate that R value. So we had to use the capital asset pricing model because the information was more complete in order to calculate that cost of equity. And then the rest was pretty simple, market value of debt, market value of equity, plug it into that weighted average cost of capital formula and you get 7.75% as your answer.